I'm going to show you how to use a bunch of different genetic databases to research your genetic disorder. So I'm going to go ahead and put the name of the genetic disorder I'm looking at here, and I'm going to be looking at familial breast and ovarian cancer. So these are actual databases that scientists use to find information. So you may come up with a ton of different resources. You're gonna to wanna to find the one that best describes the gene or the disorder that you're looking for. If you don't know, click on a few until you find one that you like. I'm gonna click this one because I know that BRCA2 is the one that I want, but you probably don't know unless your research has shown you that so far. So I'm gonna go ahead and close those external links so I can get the information that I need. The first is the location of our gene. So I'm gonna copy down exactly as it says there, which is 13Q13.1. Now, what exactly does this mean? It's kind of like an address for our gene. So what it's telling me is that it's on chromosome 13. Anything before the P or the Q is the chromosome. It could be one to 22, X or Y. The Q tells me which arm it's on. So the P is the short arm and Q means the long arm. And lastly, think of the numbers at the end like a zip code. So 13.1. That tells me where on the chromosome this is all located. I'm now gonna write my phenotype. You may have many choices or just one. I'm gonna pick the one that matches what I'm studying. So I know that mine is familial breast and ovarian cancer. but it could also be prostate cancer, pancreatic cancer, um, glioblastoma, medulloblastoma, Wilms tumor. So these are a lot of different cancers is what I'm seeing, but I'm gonna focus on this one. And then I'm gonna write the inheritance type, which if I hover over that tells me that it's autosomal dominant. If you don't know what that means yet, that's okay. It's gonna come up at a later time. And last, I'm gonna write the gene or the locus. If you search a specific disorder, it will give you a gene name. Since I already searched for a gene, I know that mine is BRCA2. If yours doesn't have one here and you don't know what the gene is, I'll show you where to find that. If you scroll down in this database, you see all kinds of information about your disorder. It'll tell you biochemical features. You can learn about the function of the gene. This is probably helpful for you to look at. but often it's very high level science and that's okay. It's just a good jumping off point. Here, you're gonna put an image of your chromosome. I'm gonna show you where in the database you can just grab a chromosome image or you can use it as a reference for drawing. But you can also look this up if you would like. So now I'm gonna go back to these external links. And so let me show you real quick what's in here. Yours may be on the far right if you are using uh, full screen. We can learn more about the DNA. We can learn about the protein. That's where we're gonna go. You can learn about different clinical trials going on. You can learn about different variations. You can learn about animal models, cell lines, so on and so forth. Not every page will have all of these choices. We're gonna go to the one called Uniprot, and this is important information about our protein. So the name of the protein for the BRCA2 gene is breast cancer type two susceptibility protein. That's quite a mouthful and I'm gonna type that here. Next, if you didn't get your gene name, it's right here, BRCA2. Next, I'm gonna write the number of amino acids. There are 3,000 418 amino acids in this 
14. That's quite a lot. So that's amino acids, not base pairs. I can see here the function. It's involved in double strand break repair and or homologous recombination. So that tells me a lot because I know I'm looking at a cancer gene. And if it's involved in double strand breaks, we know that cancer often involves um, damage to the DNA. A lot of things you can see here. I'm gonna skip ahead real quick and I wanna show you the structure. This will come up at a later time, but I just wanna show you where you can find it because it's just so cool to play with. So here's the structure of BRCA2. You can zoom way in. You can see specific base pairs, I mean, uh, amino acids, this is ALA. It, Base, uh, uh, position 166. So this is a really pretty big gene. What I'm actually gonna do right now is head over to disease and variants. So I'm looking for breast cancer. Yours may not be the very first disorder that shows up. So make sure you're looking under the right one. Now, what I have here is the positions and change and description of all the different variants they have found. See, I could also look at pancreatic cancer here. I like to pick the variant that has the highest number of publications and has a DB SNP number. In this case, most of them are ones or twos, so it doesn't really matter which one I pick. Here's a three, but it says unknown pathological significance. So I don't know if that's one I necessarily want to choose. If that's your only choice though, it's okay. So I'm gonna pick this first one, G to R. That's telling me that the amino acid was G and now becomes R. I'm gonna write that on my page. So the position of change is position 25. So amino acid 25 goes from G to R. Now this is not enough to figure out the sequence because it doesn't tell us the base pairs. So I'm going to write down this DB SNP number that starts with RS, just in case I need to reference this later. I can remember which one I picked. And I'm going to go ahead and click on DB SNP. This is one of my favorite databases. This is my second favorite database. So this is gonna show us short genetic variations for this specific location. You can find information about the allele frequency in different populations. But I'm gonna start with the variant details. What I see here is that these are different base pair changes going from G to A G to C, G to T, that cause changes in the amino acid. So I'm gonna pick this G to A change because that one matches this type of change right here. So the base pair change is G to A. And I'm gonna write the amino acid codon just as it's written here so that it's G which becomes, or was, GGA in the original. And now it becomes an R with the code AGA. Now I'm jumping a little bit ahead of myself here, but for the ease of use for later, I'm gonna go ahead and color this red. And I'm gonna draw this, and I'm gonna put it in position four. One, two, three, four right here. And I'm going to write this sequence, G, G, A. This will help remind me later where the base, base pair change was, because when we look at the gene sequence, we're just getting a whole bunch of genes all up front. Because I really want to make things easy, I'm going to highlight where this change is. Right, so I had G, G, A, and the change is A, G, A. Okay, put this guy back in the corner. All right. So here's where it gets a little confusing. We're gonna go back to the frequency and we're gonna scroll past that. I'm gonna make this bigger. And now we're gonna see 
a whole bunch of information. I want to zoom in a little bit. Okay, now that I've zoomed in, I can see my gene sequence. And I'm just going to center this to make it easier. So again, GGA is the normal sequence. GGA. And when it's altered, it's AGA. So what they're going to give you is the normal sequence. Let's make this easy on ourselves. And we're going to screenshot about 15 base pairs on either side of the highlighted one. The highlighted one is where the change is. In my case, that's the first pair, uh, the first base of a triplet, but that doesn't mean that's true for you. So you need to make sure when you write these out, you're doing it correctly, or everything's going to be off. All right, so let's look at this. We're going to put this over here and put this one over here. And I'm going to start downstream because it's just easier since that's already in my view, but it doesn't really matter. So I have GGA. GGA. I'm going to write in red because I can't see that. GGA. GGA. OK. These are my bases right here. So my next triplet is CCA, and I'm going to write that here. Again, forgive my terrible writing. And then ATA. And then AGT. AGT and then CTT. All right, let's scroll back. Now I'm going to work upstream. I have TTA. TTA. Oof. I have AGA. No, GAT. That's why you have to draw it. Now make sure you can tell the difference between your G's and your C's, G, A, T. And then above the G, A, T, I have A, T, A. Okay, so that's my top strand right here. They call that the coding strand. So I'm gonna focus on here for a minute. Now you can go ahead and make your template strand. So that's the opposite strand of DNA. So. so on and so forth. I'm going to skip to the one that has the change. You're going to want to do the whole thing. Your change may be different than mine. OK. Now, what I want you to understand is when you're translating for the mRNA, you're translating this. That's not what we want. You're, translate, you're translating this strand right here. It's where to highlight all kinds of weird stuff. Okay, whatever. We're translating this stand strand. All these weird marks to go away. This one right here, that's the one we want. And that's what's going to go. We're going to put the mRNA here. So we know how to translate mRNA. Let's go ahead and write that in. So T A T. We know that T's go to A. And A, because now we're in mRNA, goes to U, and T goes to A, AUA. Again, we're going to skip to the mRNA for the one we want. It becomes G, G, A. Interesting. You may have noticed that the healthy mRNA is the same as the coding strand, just the T's are U's. Fun fact. Then you're going to use your codon wheel to translate the into the protein. So AUA, could go to my codon wheel. We have A. That's not even the right one. AUA. We have A U A. And that tells me that it's isoleucine. 
and you can write that here. Wow, okay. TGA, you're gonna do this for all of them, not skip around like I am. It tells me that it's glycine. Okay, you'll have finished all of these. Then you're gonna do the disorder mRNA. So I know that in this case, my G becomes an A. So here, instead of CCT, and I know that this strand and those strands are the same, so I can change this down here to AGA. Again, remember if yours has a T, you have to change that to U. So I can just use this same strand, changing the one that has the mutation that's right here. Then I'm gonna go through and do my codon wheel again. So this time I have AGA, so AGA, and I get arginine. You may have a deletion or an insertion, so this might change, so be careful that you're copying the sequence correctly based upon what kind of change you've noted here. So I'm gonna set this aside for a minute. I'm gonna go back and show you where to get a picture of your chromosome by DNA sequence. Okay, one of my other favorite databases is one called Ensemble. If I had to pick, that is probably my actual favorite. So, when you get to the Ensemble database, you're going to search for that DB number with the RS in front of it. This is a big database, so this one could run a little slow. Now look at all the cool things we can do with this. You can see the distribution by population. You can see phenotype. So what are the diseases and traits associated with this variant? The picture is. So here's my gene, BRCA2, and I'm going to click on the location. And it's going to show me exactly where it is. So here is my chromosome location. So we can see chromosome 13, um, and I'm on the Q end down here. A couple interesting things I want to show you on here. So if you go back to my gene, you can also find. Um, alignments. So we could see how close we are to the mouse, how close you are to any species you really want to see.